Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my May reading wrap up. May was a crazy month for me, like just lots of things happening in re my like real life. And I decided to take on the task of trying to read the entire Women's Prize shortlist because I had had like I think three out of the five books I already checked out from the library just by happenstance and the other two were available immediately and I was like oh let me try to figure this out and I thought I would be able to do it all in the month of May but couldn't do all of it uh, which is fine and I'll talk more about like my plans <laughs> in the future for like June about getting through the shortlist and things like that when I get to like the end of the wrap up and sort of like you know wrapping up the wrap up haha <laughs> Um, but my original plan was to do like a whole reading vlog around it but then like it's gonna be a long reading vlog and I don't know if it's actually gonna get done in time so I don't know if like doing a reading vlog is still worth it let me know down in the comments below if you'd still be interested in seeing like a reading vlog about me reading the women's prize shortlist especially if it comes out after the women's prize winners announced and things like that because maybe the wrap-up is enough for everyone but some I know some people enjoy the reading vlog style because then you can see sort of like updates along the way as I'm reading the book but yeah without further ado let's get into the books that I read in the month of May so first up I have the sentence by Louise Erdrich in this story you are mainly following a character named Tuki who you find out at the beginning of the book was arrested and while she was in jail she ended up reading a lot of books and falling in love with reading and things like that and so after she gets out of jail she decides to start working for a bookshop and the bookshop that she works at is in Minnesota. It is owned by and mainly focuses on like literature from and about like indigenous people. Tuki herself is indigenous as well and there's this one customer named Flora who says that she has native blood in her and things like that who Tuki is not really like the biggest fan of but she like does lots of good for the community things like that. She ends up dying on All Souls Day and Tuki then becomes convinced that this customer is now haunting the bookstore. And so this book takes place over the course of a year and it starts in November 2019 and then it ends in November of 2020. It's a really interesting book. I didn't love this book but I did enjoy parts of the experience of reading this book. First of all, if you haven't read Louise Erdrich before, she's like a really great writer like in terms of like the way that she like crafts sentences and like lays out a story and things like that. Really really well done. For me personally though I never like fully fall in love with Louise Erdrich's books. I will say like the only other book that I've read from her is The Roundhouse and like to me like it's the main conceit or concept of the book always like catches my attention and I'm always really intrigued by but there's always a lot of other sort of side things at least feels like to me side things going on in her books that I have a harder time with. I don't feel as connected to those storylines as though when we're in the middle of those parts of the book I had a hard time just connecting with those so I would like kind of disconnect from the story a little bit but the thing is is like when I was connected to the story I was like super super engaged and I'm really enjoying the book. Of course this book again takes place over the course of a year most of it being 2020 and most of us are well aware of lots of different things that take place in 2020 so this book talks about living in the midst of the pandemic and going into lockdown it also takes place in Minnesota and so it talks about the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement after George Floyd's death and you're following Tuki also as she is like dealing with this ghost that she thinks is haunting her and dealing with her past and her history but also this relationship that she's in and things like that. Like I said like there's all these different storylines going in to this book and like some of it hit for me some of it didn't hit. So like for me this book is like a solid like three and a half star book. The writing itself amazing and even the characters like really enjoyed some of the characters that were in this book but in terms of like plot and storyline and like the overall cohesiveness of the book I always just feel like I'm going to have a hard time engaging with Louise Erdrich's books because there's so many different things that she explores which is like you know what real life is like like there's lots of different things going on in every single person's life but I always have a hard time with books that are structured that way. The next book that I read was Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. This is one that I actually listened to on audiobook because it's available on audio on Hoopla which is an app that I have access to through my lo local library and this book is 
probably my favorite out of all the ones that I've read. It's definitely one of my favorite books that I read in May, but I think it might be my favorite out of all the shortlisted books. In this story, you are following this character named Meg, and Meg is someone who suffers from a type of mental illness, and you find out towards the beginning of the story that her marriage is kind of falling apart. And the way that the story is structured is you kind of like jump around in time through various parts of Martha's life as she has like different things happen and like the you see the way that she reacts to different things. This has a strain in all of her different relationships in her life from her parents uh, to her sister to her husband and things like that. Um, there's also tension in her relationship with her husband because Martha continues to say that like she doesn't want to have children partially because of like this disorder that she's dealing with that she doesn't fully understand and things like that. And she thinks she doesn't wouldn't be a good mother because of it. This book was so well done for a couple of different reasons. One is like the exploration of mental illness in this book. It's never explicitly said like what mental illness she suffers with because the author I think has a note at the end of the book that basically says like she's not trying to talk about a specific type of mental illness but kind of like the side effects or the way that a mental illness can affect your life or can affect people's lives. But the other thing that I really enjoyed about this book is that like Martha as a character is extremely like complicated and so she's like also just like a self-sabotaging person um she makes bad decisions and so there's like a part of her that like blames her mental illness sometimes for the bad decisions that she's making but sometimes she's just making bad decisions and sort of like the discussion that happens around that or just sort of like working through that as a reader while you're following this character is really interesting because there are some times that like um mental illness like depression or bipolar or anything along those lines will have an effect on your life but sometimes you will just also make poor choices for your life and will have to deal with the consequences of that and like the way that everything sort of builds up in the story and the way that it like sort of wraps up at the end was just brilliant I just honestly thought it was brilliantly done it was an audiobook where I did not want to stop listening to it I adored every minute that I spent with this book it's one of those books that's like really at least for me it really made me think a lot about like relationships and the way that you view yourself in these relationships and the amount of like work or effort you're willing to put into it and things like that and the excuses you might make for yourself uh, but also like the way that your family and your history can impact those things as well and there's like some really great like parts or speeches from like Martha's family members especially her sister and things like that towards the end of the book and especially like her husband and that relationship and things like that like the way that they reflect on Martha's life and how Martha realizes that like they view her completely differently than she would have viewed herself and like they bring things to light in just just this really amazing way that I really really love like Sorrow and Bliss is so good <laughs> and it's definitely gonna be I think on my uh favorites of the year. Next I read The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozaki and this was a really interesting book which again I had kind of mixed feelings about I think part of, partially because it's a longer book and so there were parts of it where I was just like I don't I don't know if this is needed right now um, I'm extra critical of books that are longer because I'm always just like I feel like you need to justify the amount of pages that you're taking up <laughs> and the amount of time you're taking. But anyways, in this story, you are mainly following this character named Benny O, who had a father who was a musician who ended up dying. He was like hit by a car in their alleyway and things like that. And so you're following Benny and his mother. And after his father passes away, he starts to hear voices. Like he believes that objects are speaking to him. Like he hears what they're thinking and how they're feeling about situations and things like that. And then you're also following Benny's mother who starts to develop a hoarding problem, especially with the stress of trying to take care of Benny and take care of everything in the household after uh, Benny's dad passes away. The way this book is structured is it's told in two parts. One of them is told from the perspective of a book who is telling this story of Benny's life but then you also get the perspective of Benny and as well as like a couple of other characters and objects over the course of the story. You are mainly following like Benny and his mother as they are grieving the death of his father and the ways that they are coping or lacking coping mechanisms in order to properly grieve and the way that like they start to attach themselves to various possessions in different ways and things like that. And yeah, like this is again one where it feels 
like a little bit of a mixed bag. You follow Benny and his mother over the course of a few years. And so you see like various developments that take place. You see Benny starting to really struggle. The The fact that he can hear voices or he can hear objects or feel the feelings of objects and things like that really start to take a toll on him. And he ends up, you know, going through some serious like mental health crises. And it's really interesting because as a reader, you're not really sure, like, is this a magical realism book or is this a realistic book of a person having like a mental breakdown and seeing sort of like how the book chooses to like show these things to the reader is really interesting or was really interesting for me sort of like that balancing act of like what exactly is this type of story and sort of like the stance it takes and things like that there's like one specific part of the book that I don't really want to talk about too much which is why I'm like maybe I want to do post the reading vlog because there's like one specific storyline that takes place towards the end of the book where there's I won't say explicitly what it is but anyone who's read the book will probably know what I'm talking about but there's a character in the book that is a very direct parallel to a real life person and a real life like famous person and I did not <laughs> understand like why that was done like there were entire sections taken from that person's like real life real publications <laughs> just trying to keep it as vague as possible and put into this book and I was just like is this needed is this necessary? I'm not really sure. And so those were like the times where I was just like, eh, you're, you're, you're making it difficult for me to love you. book. But like reading about Benny and his mother and things like that, and their like grief and the way that they're trying to like live life, but they're burdened by so much mentally was really like sad and heartbreaking, but also really beautiful and moving and sort of seeing sort of how things evolve with them and their relationship and things like that was just like, that stuff was beautiful and I loved all of that. So yeah, this was another book that was like kind of a mixed bag for me. This one would probably be more like three and a half, four star rating just because like the parts that hit me, like there were parts of this book that made me want to cry, but it does feel a little bit bad in my opinion. Like there's some stuff that I feel like could have been trimmed or could have been adjusted and things like that. And there are some things that do feel a little bit like happily ever after -y, but like the magical nature of the book made it feel slightly okay that some things could be wrapped up so neatly. Okay, and then the final book that I read from the short list was The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. And this is one that I was really excited to be able to read uh, because I love Elif Shafak's books. I mean, I've read the majority of her books. I haven't read them all. And I've loved the majority of them. I haven't loved them all again. But this is another one that I really, really enjoyed. In this book, you are following two characters who were born and raised on Cyprus, uh, one of whom is Greek and the other one is Turkish. And Greeks and Turks don't really get along super well. They end up meeting and falling in love. Things happen and they end up moving to England and having a kid together. And the story begins with like the father basically like burying a fig tree in England because I think winter is about to come and things like that and you kind of like find out the story of these two on Cyprus as what led them to England and their daughter being born and all this stuff and you know that like something happened with their families but you're not really sure like what exactly happened but they've like basically stopped talking to their families and things like that. You sort of see kind of like a present day timeline with the daughter grieving and also like dealing with her feelings with her aunt who you know, didn't even come to her own sister's funeral and things like that. Uh, and then you also have like a flashback timeline where you are seeing these two meet and fall in love and the tumultuous relationship that ends up occurring because of that. You also see in the past, like the history of things that have happened on Cy Cyprus. And so you get a lot of really good like historical information, which I think provides really good context to everything that's happening. But also you learn a lot about trees and nature and especially fig trees and things like that. So I feel like if you're someone who really enjoys like nature writing, whether fiction or nonfiction, I feel like this is a book that you would really enjoy because there's a lot of really interesting things about the way that Alif Shafak talks about like trees and bees and birds and animals and all of that stuff and how that can sometimes be like 
a metaphor or a parallel to the things that are happening in the main character's lives. And it's all done really, really well. So yeah, to me, this book was really well done, really beautiful. You know, it's heartbreaking to see sort of the consequences of these two people falling in love and, you know, coming from basically like rival backgrounds and things like that. But it's also really beautiful to see like how they come together and the things that have happened to them and stuff like that. And the way that Alif Shafak uses like a fig tree to be this metaphor and stuff like that. I'm not sure that I like fully love the way that everything wrapped up at the end with the fig tree. Again, no spoilers, but just gonna leave it at that for anyone who's read the book. That one felt like it took a little bit of a leap that I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> and so I was just like, this is a choice. But all right. But other than that, I felt like this book was really, really well done. Again, another one of those books that I like enjoyed my experience reading it. Really was intrigued to see sort of how everything was going to wrap up, seeing the history of these characters and things like that. It's like a beautiful story about like leaving your home and not being able to return to it or when you return to it when everything is different. Falling in love, heartbreak, death grief. It covers so much and it does it all so, so well done. I really, really love the way Aleve Shafak writes. All right, and then two more books that I finished. The first one was an audiobook of Finlay Donovan, Knocks Him Dead. This is the second book in the Finlay Donovan series by El Casamano. I read the first book in the series last year, I think. Or was it earlier this year? I don't remember. And I enjoyed it. It's fun. It's like popcorn reading for me. Like it's one of those things where it's like you have to really suspend your disbelief while reading these books. But if you want like a fun silly mystery or not silly but like over the top mystery then this is worth checking out. I feel like the series is really popular on booktube and I think it deserves the popularity because it's rare to find like fun over the top mysteries that are actually like well written. It's also a bit tongue in cheek because the main character in this book is also a writer and so there's a lot of jokes about like publishing and things like that. This one is a little bit different than the first book. The story begins with her meeting with her agent about the book that she's writing and she's ta she's a mystery writer but someone overhears her and thinks that the book that she's talking about is actually her life and thinks that Finlay is a hit person. So she ends up asking Finlay to kill her husband for like an extremely large sum of money and things like that. This book basically picks up right where the last book take, uh, finishes off, which I, I don't want to like give it away significantly, but basically someone puts a hit on someone that she knows. And so it's less of like her trying to accomplish something and more of like her trying to like solve a mystery in this one. Like I said, this is these are books that feel like, you know, popcorn, candy, light reading that doesn't really leave much of an impact. You again really have to suspend your disbelief. Like Finlay's sister is a police officer and there's like certain things where it's just like, how were these people not getting caught? There's like, you know, a little love triangle going on in these stories and things like that. But if you want a book where you can kind of turn your brain off a little bit and you just go on like a wild adventure, these books are perfect for that. So yeah, these are fun, but they're not anything that I'm like, yes, you immediately need to go pick these up. But like, if you want something really ridiculous, these are worth it. All right. And the final book that I finished in the month of May was Jade City by Fonda Lee. This was the book that I read with the Chunky Chapter Book Club, which is my Patreon book club. This was the May pick. And I'm very glad that this ended up winning the poll because this is a book that I've like had on my radar because everyone talks about the series. And I ended up really enjoying this book uh, so much so that I really want to keep going with the series. I'm like debating about whether or not I want to like ask book club members to read this or if I should just like pick up the other two on my own. But yeah, in case you aren't aware, this is basically an urban fantasy series and you are following basically these two rival clans. They end up in this world, like people get their energy from Jade. And so there's this one clan family that's mainly in charge of the Jade. Uh, and then there's this other clan family that's basically been stealing the jade and you follow this book from the Greenbone family and you're following a couple of different siblings who are in charge and you know things happen and I won't get too much into it and I'm not going to talk too much about it because you know that's what the Patreon book club is for but you basically see like the reveal that the other clan is stealing jade and sort of things are escalating in this city and things like that and yeah this book took me by surprise the first couple hundred pages uh, I was like, yeah, I like this book, but I don't really get what the big deal is. And um, big thing happens. I was like, holy crap. And then 
from there, it was like nothing but like me just wanting to turn all the pages being like, what's going to happen next? And even with the way that things end, like it doesn't necessarily end on a cliffhanger, so to speak, but there are like these really big reveals that happen or these really big like kind of plot twists that happen almost. And I'm just like, I don't know what's going to happen next. Like there's so much that happened in this book that I was so surprised by. And so I'm very intrigued to see what Fonda Lee does with the rest of the series. And I've heard good things about the rest of the series too. So yeah, really enjoyed my experience reading Jade City. Um, if you're interested in joining the Chunky Chapter Book Club, the Patreon link is always down below in the description. Come check it out. We focus on reading books that are on the chunky side. So typically over 500 pages and we only pick one every other month. So we give each ourselves like a little bit of a break in between. So yeah, that's everything I read in the month of May. So even though I had a busy month, I was able to get through quite a bit with the help of audiobooks, starting to bring those into my like reading schedule and stuff like that again, now that I'm outside and walking more and driving more and things like that. So in terms of <laughs> my reading plans, like I said, I'm trying to read through the entire Women's Prize shortlist, which it's going to be announced very soon, like within a week or so of when this video goes live. And I'm currently reading Great Circle, but I'm not like loving my experience with this book. And so part of me is like, I don't know if I should just keep going for the sake of the vlog slash just to be a completionist, but I'm not really like the completionist type. And then the other problem is the fact that like the other book that's nominated, The Bread, The Devil We Need, crap, what is it called? The Bread, The Devil Need. That is a book that is not available at all through my library. Like none of the libraries in my system have it available. So I decided to buy it from Barnes and Noble, but I don't know when this freaking package is gonna come. <laughs> and so part of me is like, should I just also buy it on my Kindle? Cause I wanted to avoid buying it on Kindle. But now I'm like, should I just buy it on my Kindle and just read it that way? Cause it's also one of the shorter ones on the list. I don't really know what to do. So let me know down in the comments below if you've read Great Circle and or The Bread the Devil Need, like what your thoughts are. Should I just keep going for the sake of the video? Are you interested in a Women's Prize vlog? Especially if it comes after the Women's Prize is announced. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to get through these books. Also, we're getting to the point of the year where like my life is just busy like my summers just always feel like they're super super busy and so my reading will probably be a lot slower I'll probably be posting less I'm not gonna like say I'm officially taking a break or anything like that I'll try to at least do like monthly wrap up because I think those are good to do I like keeping track of the books that I'm reading and talking about those with you guys but I don't know how much I'm gonna be reading and I also don't know how much I'm gonna be posting so that's also just like a little announcement slash heads up for everyone not that anyone really like holds me to hard schedule like I literally just took like the last two weeks off because I didn't have time to make videos so yeah that's everything. Let me know down in the comments below, you know, your thoughts on Women's Prize shortlist, thoughts on a reading vlog, uh, thoughts on any of the books that I talked about here today, um, or anything else you feel like telling me about. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.